Hello YouTubers. This is continuation of the lesson how to control Mitsubishi VFD via Profibus by the Siemens S7-1200 PLC. In the previous videos I have covered the hardware configuration in the TIA portal and FR configurator. In this video I will go through the programming with step 7. From the previous video you know that for the control of the VFD the PPO type 3 is used. The links to the previous videos are in the description. Let's take a closer look to the PPO type 3 data mapping. As you already know, PPO type 3 uses two input words and two output words. One word is used for control and status bit, another for setpoint frequency and output frequency. Let's look into the manual of the A8NP where the control and status bits are explained. Command word is called STW. Bits from 0 to 2 are not in use, they need to be always true. Third bit enables control. Bits from 4 to 6 are not in use, they need to be always true. Seventh bit resets the fault. Bits 8 and 9 are not in use, they need to be always false. Bit 10 enables command request. Bit 11 is command to run forward. Bit 12 is command to run reverse. Bit 13 activates the function, that is assigned to the RT terminal. Bit 14 is used with electromagnetic break. Bit 15 determines whether setting of the frequency is taken from RAM or EEPROM. Status word is called ZSW. Bits from 0 to 2 are not in use, they will return always true. Third bit shows if there is a fault. Bits 4 and 5 are not in use, they will return always true. Bit 6 shows power on inhibit. Bit 7 is an alarm bit, it shows command execution error. Bit 8 is not in use, it returns always false. Bit 9 shows the control request. Bit 10 is used to monitor if the output frequency is higher than the preset value. Bit 11 shows if the inverter is running. Bit 12 shows that inverter direction is forward. Bit 13 shows that direction of the inverter is reverse. Bit 14 shows if the control method of the inverter is via network. Bit 15 shows if inverter is busy because of the command execution. Word HSW means set frequency. Word HIW means output frequency. The increments is 0,01 Hz. Let's get back to the TIA portal. Here you can see the function block, that I have created years ago, and I use it in all of my projects. To create a block you need to click add new block, select a function block, select the programming language, I do use SCL, give a name to the block. Number of the block can be input automatically or manually. When all is done then click OK. Your newly created function block will appear in the folder of the program blocks. First of all let's configure interface section, that is used to define parameters of the code block. First two integer type variable status and control are used to store the address of the peripheral inputs and outputs. Then there are 7 control bits and frequency set point. Outputs of the function block will represent the feedback from VFD. Static words will store control and status data of the VFD. Programming part. At the beginning of the block I do read the data from the VFD and populate it into the outputs of the function block. After that I do configure the control data and do send it to the VFD. Detailed information on peak and poke instructions can be found in the help of the TIA portal. Let's compile and save the program. Each function block needs to have instance data block. It will be generated automatically after your first call. After compilation download the project to the PLC. Now we need to check is there a link between PLC and VFD. As you can see the link is OK.
here is our VFD. Module status is available and OK. Create a watch table with inputs and outputs of the function block and let's monitor the data of the VFD. The status of NetBit shows that VFD is online. Let's switch to the FR configurator. Switch the PU operation mode. The NetBit shows that VFD is not in network operation mode. Let's switch it back to net operation mode. Set the acceleration time 10 seconds, so we will see how the speed increases. Set PZD and control bits to true. Set the speed of the VFD to 25 Hz. Now let's start it to run forward. As you can see the speed is increasing. The feedback from FVD shows that it runs and direction is forward. Stop the rotation. Speed decreases. Start the reverse. The feedback from FVD shows that it runs and direction is backward. Stop the VFD and start to run forward. Let's increase the speed to the 40 Hz. Let's change the speed to 15 Hz. As you can see the VFD is controlled by a Profibus. Next step is to create visualization to simplify the control and the monitor of the VFD. This will be covered in my next video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something new from this small lesson.